We had Melody Festival in 2020, a new decade started, it's semi-final two in Gothenburg. And with us now we have the big pleasure to be speaking to a newcomer to the contest. It's Paul Ray and he'll be singing Talking in My Sleep. Hi Paul, how are you? I'm good man, how are you doing? Very good, it's good to be back in Gothenburg. We were here last year for this first semi-final, now it's the second. But how do you feel to be in this competition? Uh, very excited. As you said, it's my first time um, and it's my first time also performing in an arena uh, with a crowd that large. So so it's a lot of firsts for me, but uh, I'm super excited. You're not only a singer, you're also a songwriter. Yeah. So you, you wrote the song yourself, exactly. like co-writing co it. Exactly. And, and how do you go about this, writing a song together? Um, it's always different. This was actually the first time that I met both Lucas and Alex that I wrote the song with. Mm -hmm. um, and in three hours, we had written it and recorded it. And it's actually the same vocal takes from mm -hmm. that day that we used in the final piece. So uh, that, that time it went really quickly. Um, something just felt natural and mm -hmm. sometimes you get in that creative flow and everything just comes out great. Um, and that was the case for this one. How come you, you wanted to participate in Melody Festival? For me, I felt like um, once I've written Talking In My Sleep, I just felt like this is a perfect um, kind of first presentation of me as an artist. I think mm -hmm. the vocals are really clear and they stand out. The lyrics are really good and the song is strong. It's a ballad, but it also has some drive and power to it. Uh, so I just thought like for people that haven't seen or heard of me before, mm -hmm. this would be a first uh, introduction that would be perfect for me. As a songwriter, you're not only singing in the semi-final two, but you have also a song as a composer in semi-final four. Yeah, that's right. Um, how, how do you feel about competing against your own song if you get into the second chance when you have to go into a duel, for instance? Oh yeah, that would be <laughs> that would be really crazy, actually. Um, but it's fun because I love the other song "Surface." I love that one as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really awesome that it gets a chance to also be in Melody Festival, and so. Uh, if we get headed against each other, that would be a, a special. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, I'm just happy that both songs made it. Talking in my sleep, how will you stage it on, on, on the, on the uh, arena tonight? I'm actually all by myself on the, on the stage. Um, I'm using a lot of projections behind me and there's going to be some effects for the TV crowd as well. Um, so I, it's just going to be dynamic mm -hmm. uh, as the song is. So just trying to enhance the, the parts of the song. Fantastic. So, uh, where from in Sweden are you? I'm from uh, Lund. Okay, Lund is, yeah, yeah. is, is near Malmö? It's very near, okay, Malmö. near Malmö, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, you know that. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> well, yeah. You've been coming to Sweden quite a, quite a lot, wow. so your vision was in Malmö before, yeah, so that exactly. was, uh, was good. No. Um, what made you become a singer? When did, when did you start getting the feeling, I want to be on the stage? Uh, that was really early. I think I my first time performing with a microphone and singing on stage, I think I was six or seven or something wow. like that yeah so it was really early um and i always liked music but back then i didn't really think like yeah i want to be an artist back then i wanted to be a basketball player that was like wow. yeah that was my <laughs> dream and then i got into my teenage years and i stopped growing and i was just like all right <laughs> maybe not basketball um so i think at about 13 14 i really started writing my own songs mm -hmm. uh, expressing myself creatively and then that kind of sparked the idea of hey maybe i could do this as a living but back then it was hip-hop so i started rough rapping okay and, wow. yeah and then i started singing when i was 21 i think or something like okay. that yeah so it's it's been a it's been a little progress uh, educational question you you want to go to your vision song contest like when you win melody festival right that's the ticket to represent your country in rotterdam right well i'm actually i'm living not far away from there okay yeah, um, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, d how do you cope with the with the the pressure that's getting put onto you then? Because you're representing your country as an ambassador. Right. Yeah. Um, I would love to have that opportunity. Um, I would love to represent Sweden. I would love to be the winner of Melody Festival and go to Rotterdam. That would be awesome. Um, I, w I wouldn't really think too much about the pressure of, of representing uh, my country. I, I would just be proud to do it, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, and I think I would uh, do it really well. So hopefully the people think so as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. Uh, that's out of my control. I just focus on what I can uh, control and change. And that's, you know, going through the rehearsals, going through the repetitions, making sure everything sounds good mm -hmm. um, and just deliver 100%. 
Fabulous. Uh, Melody Festival has a big history here in Sweden. Uh, have you been following Melody Festival in, in the past? And have you any favorite moments, fa favorite songs from Melody Festival? For me, uh, I started following it when uh, Lorraine won with Euphoria. Mm -hmm. It was such a huge moment in Sweden and such a huge hit. And she really changed the way you perceived Melody Festival and what you could do with the performance and what kind of genres were competing. Um, so that was really fascinating. And then my favorite performance otherwise is uh, Robin Bengtsson's I Can't Go On because mm. I thought that was so creative and just genius. Yeah. It's really genius. I haven't seen a performance mm. like that before. Uh, and my favorite song from Melody Festival and I think is like if I would have written it myself I would have been really proud so it was uh, Felix Sandman's ballad from two years ago okay uh, yeah. it's every, every, single, every day. single day it's really beautifully written um, I think it's a really strong song I think it sold more in, in Sweden than the winner did at Melody Festival in that year no? yeah, maybe so, yeah I think amazing, it's yeah. super super great song fantastic yeah. Eurovision as well yeah. the history when did you start watching Euphoria was the first year then or uh, yeah exactly and then uh, we usually watch it but there's so many competitors that mm -hmm. I don't remember uh, as much from as from Melody Festival yeah. Um, but yeah I've, I've been watching it since Euphoria as well excellent yeah. and, yeah. and uh, any other famous uh, favorite moments uh, that you have from Eurovision on the, in those years I don't remember the 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 name of the song, mm -hmm. but the Portuguese singer had a beautiful ballad. Salvador Sobal, yeah, 2017. Yeah, yeah, that was a really beautiful moment. I, I love that that it, that it won, mm -hmm. that you could win with such a broken down acoustic piece. Uh, and he sang in Portuguese, he didn't sing in English, and he won anyway. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really powerful and really beautiful because, you know, you, you don't even have to understand the words to get the emotion of the song mm -hmm. uh, and what the artist is performing. So I thought that was really beautiful. Now, um, many singers, well, here in Sweden, every singer is a professional. Uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> I, I go to countries where they have also other jobs. Right, so right. Jobs right. and like teachers, music right. teachers, and so on. Right. Uh, do you do this full time? singing or you have also something else you, you're working on uh, no I do this full-time singing mm -hmm. yeah yeah question and hobby apart from singing basketball 100 still basketball yeah sports. still oh. basketball man uh i play it a lot i play it um i think two maybe sometimes three times a week mm -hmm. um not really like competitive just you know you go you uh, link up with the 16 other guys and you just play basketball mm -hmm. um so that's that's the hobby otherwise so today the rehearsals and tomorrow as well and then saturday you go into the arena to fight basically basically uh, yeah. yeah with music yeah mm -hmm. so how do you prepare yourself <laughs> apart from rehearsals me mentally how do you prepare yourself um i think actually rehearsing for me is such a mental preparation that i can just go into my own zone when the when the performance starts because i've rehearsed mm. it so much it's in my backbone and it's just like it's it's there i'm i'm comfortable with it i think that's the best way for me to actually prepare myself mm -hmm. mentally i've been performing a lot uh as I said, though, not in front of an arena, but, you know, a crowd is a crowd. I always try to deliver 100% with NG, whether it's mm. two people in the room or if it's 200 or 2,000. So a performance is a performance, but now when it's a lot of camera angles, you got to remember each mm. and every line has, has a look. Uh, I just try to prepare myself as much as possible. And then right before I go on stage, I think about first word of the song, a um, couple of deep breaths, do a little jumps, you know, get the blood mm. flowing, and then... And then Fabulous, the showtime. Fantastic. Well, well, one important thing that I need to cover. Yeah. You have a connection with Quincy Jones. Yeah. How did that come up? It's a, it's a huge name. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I was actually in Los Angeles in 20, 2015. Um, and my, my first single as Paul Ray was called Good As Hell. And he heard it before it was released. And he really loved it. So he called me and then wow. asked if I could meet him the day, the, the day after. And of course I could, because it's Quincy mm. Jones. Um, so he invited me to his uh, Bel Air mansion. Um, we hanged for about four hours, just listening to music, mm -hmm. sharing stories, talking. And then uh, since then, he's kind of been like a mentor where we meet up every time I'm in Los Angeles. He flew me out to Vegas once as well. Wow. And just, you know, being able to learn from from a guy that has experienced so much, has produced so much in so many different genres. It's just um, the best kind of teacher you can have. 
would you pursue a career then in the US? Because you like you like rap and you have a bit of soft rock, maybe that goes goes good in America. Maybe it does, yeah, absolutely in the future, yeah. Right now, mm -hmm. I'm trying to focus on on Sweden and Europe, but mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, if uh, if the chance would come, I would love to make a career there as well. We wish you all the best of luck for 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 this moves and of course for uh, Melody Festival in 2020 semi final two. Take the, that step into the grand final uh, on hopefully, Saturday. Hopefully, and yeah. it's been nice meeting you, chatting with you, and all the best of luck. Nice meeting you as well, man. Thank you so much.